Every once in a while, God and Pastor Dirt, or God tells Pastor Dirt, get that old man off the shelf and let him preach on Sunday morning. Brush him off and get him going. <laughs> and uh, I knew it was coming. The Lord gave me a couple of scriptures a while back and uh, started getting me ready, getting me in the spirit to do it. And uh, we're living in very, very exciting days. Do you know that? Yes. We're living in the last days. And that's usually why the Lord gets me off the shelf because we need to re remember where we're at and how urgent things are. I mean, it could happen today. I could be preaching right. Oh, I could go down. I'd be gone. There's no sign of when the rapture or the taking away of the born again true believers is going to happen. Matter of fact, the apostles and uh, all those early church uh, preachers and uh, disciples and all them thought it was going to happen in their lifetime. But 2,000 years later, we're still here. But that means one thing. We're 2,000 years closer. I don't know where he's going to take me this morning with this. Uh, I didn't put things on the uh, scripture up there because it kind of takes away from my communication with the Holy Spirit as he's talking to me. So if you guys want to have scripture or follow me in scripture, most of it's going to be in Matthew 24, which is the end time scripture. And a lot of people, they read this and they say, man, I just, it's hard to understand. I just don't understand. But when I'm done, I hope today you'll have a good enough grasp on chapter 24 that you can start reading it and, and meditate on it and let God talk to you. Amen. Okay? I've been doing this for 40 plus years. The, like I always tell you when I'm preaching, this is what I got. I cut my teeth on, and so I pretty well. I'm not the expert, but I'm pretty close to knowing just about what it's all about. So we're going to take a walk through Matthew 24 <clears throat> and let you see the teaching that Jesus taught about the end times. It starts out, Jesus and the disciples, they're uh, walking the, either from the temple or they're on the temple mount anyhow. And they're looking at the great temple that was built by Solomon and how beautiful and how uh, majestic it is. And uh, the disciples are commenting on everything about it. And Jesus throws a curveball at them. He says, do you know... Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. He's saying this temple's gone. And it is gone. I've been over on Israel on the mount, on the temple mount. It's gone. Not a stone there. So this prophecy that Jesus taught here happened in 70 AD. The Romans came in and they destroyed the temple because there was gold, a lot of gold in the temple. It was made with gold and it had gold lit on the walls and stuff and they just tore it down and melted all the gold down and they wiped it out and they wiped most of Israel out, uh, Jerusalem out, and they scattered the people all over the world. When that happened, God's time clock stopped. When Israel's out, when the Jews are out of Israel, the prophetic time clock stops. And it stopped for almost 2,000 years. But in 1948, Israel became a nation again, and the countdown to the end time started up again and said that 
the generation that was born in that time, it says here in Matthew 24, the generation that was born at, when the, the signs start to happen is the generation that's going to see Christ return. Whoa. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all be excited about that because I'm that generation. My the generation from 1948 up to in the 60s sometimes, the baby boomers. That's the generation that's going to see Christ. It's exciting. And I, I, I'm watching. I think about every time I get out of bed in the morning, I'm thinking, Lord, is this going to be the day? Amen. I'm tired of this world. Amen. I turn on the TV sometimes just listening to the news. And if you're not depressed when you're done listening to the news, there's something wrong with you. I just heard where a woman that was a foster mother took her baby, killed him, threw him in a storm drain in Cincinnati or somewhere in the high air. Another woman got taken to jail because she had her kids, she had them tied up in their room, taped up, and a boy got away and got to the neighbors and they finally got the cops involved and she got put in prison. Or was getting ready to be tried and put in prison. That happens all the time. I watch Youngstown News. And every night somebody's getting shot. You think we're living in a good world today? We're not. I lived back in the 50s and 60s. Those were pretty calm days. I never expected to see the world turn the way it has turned. We are living in very, very bad times. So Jesus tells them about the temple is going to be destroyed and they marvel at that. And that brings them uh, to the next part of this chapter. They're on the mount, probably on the Mount of Olivet because if you look east across from the Temple Mount, you can see the Mount of Olivet. And they had come to Jesus and sits down with him and they begin to question him. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, now they're going to ask him three things. Tell us when will these things be? He's talking, he's talking about the temple being destroyed. So, and what will be the signs of your coming? Now there's signs pointing to his coming. And it's talking about his second coming. The rapture, the taking away of believers is just for truly born again believers. The rapture is for nobody else. Only those that are the bride of Christ. That truly are have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, there's people in the church that don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Sad to say it. And those people are not going to make the rapture. All you got to do is uh, read chapter 25 after this 24 where it talks about the ten virgins. Ten of, five of them make it, five of them don't. It's talking about the church. You know, you can have Jesus up here. But you got to have Jesus here. Amen. There's a difference between believing and truly believing. That word believing is a kind of confusing thing. Believing and truly believing causes action out of you. Just like Brother Dave said, we need to be out there witnessing as hard as we can nowadays because if you truly believe that Jesus is coming back, can you believe that? Listen, this is what we were supposed to believe. We're supposed to believe that Jesus is going to come down in the cloud, above the clouds. There's going to be a shout. There's going to be a trumpet sound. And he's going to say, come up hither. Amen. And we're going to just disappear and go up to be with him. And there's going to be people that has died in, in Jesus in the grave. And they're going to come out of the grave. And they're going to go up to be with him. And in a twinkling of an eye. Our 
body's going to change into a spiritual, eternal body and we'll be with Jesus forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Can you believe that? Is it in you to believe that? If it's not, you need to be in prayer. You need to be studying your Bible because that's what God asks you to believe. He asked you to believe that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, that he preached the gospel for 33 years, that he's crucified for your sins, that he went in the grave, but he didn't stay there. He went in hell three days and preached to them the gospel and to the paradise that was down there at the time. And then on the third day, he was resurrected, and there was other people resurrected, and he was here for 40 days, seen by many, and then he ascended up into the head of heaven. When he went to heaven, he took, led the captives free, those who believed in him when he went down to hell to preach to them. And he steps at the right hand of God. That's what the Bible asks you to believe. Is it in you, is it in here, that you believe that? Amen. A lot of people has it up here. Right. Yep. It's not, when you got it up here, you're not going up there. You hear me? Amen. You still got time. Amen. If it's not in here, and it's only in here, you're not going up there. <clears throat> so Jesus is asked, tell us when the, this will happen, what is the signs of the coming and the end of the age. What age? The church age. Chapters 1, 2, and 3 of Revelation. You know, I was thinking when I was studying this, we have a little more advantage on these disciples and the uh, and these old uh, Christians back in that day, we have Paul's writing on the rapture and the first and second Thessalonica. We have Revelation now that really shows us how the last seven years of Daniel's prophecy is going to be like. And we have, we have a little bit of advantage over them. But then again, we don't because they didn't talk about it. So Jesus starts explaining or starts answering these questions. He starts out by telling them the signs that are going to happen. And we see those signs happening right now. Israel is at war. We're at war. You know, we're at war in Syria, Jordan, Yemen, all those places. Britain, us, we're, we're fighting against these terrorists. He says there will be wars and rumors of wars. And these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. He says, for nation will rise against nation, king against king, and there will be famines and pestilence, code 19, and earthquakes. You hear the news, there's a lot of earthquakes happening right now in different places. But he says, don't worry yet, because this is not the end. These are the beginning of sorrows. Another place, I think it's in Luke 17 or somewhere in Luke's teaching on this, he says, these are birth pains. And you know I've taught you and preached before to you that birth pains, women knows what they're all about. They start out light and far apart and then they get close and more intense, and more intense, more intense, until she's on the bed screaming her head at, off <laughs> at her husband and, and then just chewing him out for doing this there. <laughs> well, that's where, where we're at now. We're at the start of the birth page. We might be even in the middle. We might be almost where we're hearing that mother screaming out. Amen. The birth of Christ. Amen. The start of the tribulations. The revelation. They said they will deliver you up the tribulation will kill you and you will be hated by nations for my name's sake. And there's people, Christians being killed today. Yeah. That's right. 
And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Isn't that a sad thing? We see a lot of families today. Kids hate their parents. Hate them enough that they kill them. We just brought the case up with the twins that killed their parents here in the news a couple days ago. And many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. We've seen that over the years, Jim Jones and the one that, the nut that in Waco. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. We are seeing this fulfilled, lawlessness. No regard for police. What was on the news the other day, I see a gang of kids kicking and hitting two cops in New York who was trying to arrest their friend and the rest of the gang was kicking and beating them and, and I don't know how it ended up. I didn't get the rest of the story. No regard for law and order, for the police. I don't even know why anybody want to be a cop today. Huh? They don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> but he who endures to the end shall be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world and witnessed to all nations, and then the end will come. Now this is important because you have TV evangelists saying, that before Jesus comes back, we have to reach all the nations of the world. Send your money in. Yeah. Now. Now. Rapture takes place whenever God decide, has it planned out, it takes place. There's going to be people saved during the seven year tribulation. There's going to be an angel flying around preaching the gospel to those who can't be reached. There's going to be 144,000 Jewish evangelists going around the world preaching the gospel, getting people saved. There's going to be two witnesses on TV uh, having fire come out of their mouth and, and witnessing the t people to people about Jesus. When they're done, then all has been reached and all the nation has been reached. Don't get into the thing that these preachers say that Jesus isn't coming back till we reach all the nation because we cannot do it. If we could, that angel wouldn't have to be flying around preaching the gospel. But he said, wait, disciples. These first three and a half years of the tribulation is going to not be really, really bad. Wait till you see the second half. I've shortened the bad, shortened it down to three and a half years, because it's going to get bad. He says, when you see the abomination of the desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophets standing in the holy place, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. All hell is going to break loose. The Antichrist comes on the scene at the beginning of the seven year tribulation signs a peace treaty with Israel, gets his kingdom all together, and then he decides now it's time to declare that I am God. Amen. And he's going to go into a temple that's been rebuilt on a mount. The temple mount is going to be another big old temple built there. And he's going to go into the holies, the holies to the altar, and he's going to Proclaim himself as God and he's going to sacrifice a pig on the altar. You know how bad that the Jewish people dislike pigs? <laughs> you go to Israel, you're not going to get any bacon and eggs, I can tell you right now. Guys. You're not getting any. <laughs> if you want your bacon and eggs, you best stay here. <laughs> they don't even put cheese on che uh, hamburgers. They don't believe you should mix cheese and hamburgers. When you go to McDonald's, there's cheeseburgers. And they're the healthiest people in the world. Yeah, they are. <laughs> that tells them what they need to do. They need to escape and uh, not turn back and pray it's not on the Sabbath. And this all points to the Jewish people because that's where it's going to happen. You know, 
A lot of Americans think that the center of the earth is the United States. It's not. In God's eyes, the center of the earth is Israel. Yeah. And it's the center of our earth. Yep. And if anyone says to you, look, here's Christ, there's going to be people saying, hey, here's Christ. We, we've always seen that in some people. See, I've told you these things beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out and look, he is in the inner room, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and from the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man. Now this is confusing. This is not the rapture that he's talking about here. This is the second coming. When he comes back and plants his feet on the Mount of Olives and Armageddon takes place, that's what he's talking about here. Remember, the rapture of Christ is not going to touch the ground. He's going to be up above the clouds. He's not really come back. He's calling his church out. Amen? Amen? Amen. He comes back at the second coming, at the end of the tribulation. And you'll see it. You'll see as the lightning flashes from one side to the other side of the sky. Everybody will see it. And then this last verse, 28. This, do you ever have verses that really confuse you? And you read, I've been reading that verse for 40 some years. And I never understood verse 28. There's another verse when they're in the garden of before Jesus is taken, arrested and taken. They talk about a young boy that comes with a cloth wrapped around him. And they say that they go to grab him and they rip the cloth off of him and he runs off naked. I can never understand why that's in there. Do you? It's in there. Have you ever read it? Never understood. I keep saying, Lord, why did you put that in there? Huh? <laughs> yeah, he didn't say Ethel. But he probably was the first street. <laughs> but this last verse says, after it says that the lightning flashes, and I said that that's Jesus coming back and pl planting his feet on the Mount of Olives, and the uh, war of Armageddon takes place. This last verse reads, For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Anybody know what that means? Do you think, Four? John, that's where it's uh, going to Armageddon, where all the people are dead, and God sends the vultures and cleans the carcasses up? You're right. Yeah. Forty years I've been reading that, and, he told, and God told, explained it to me this week. That's something when you get something from God. Amen. Then you have another one that confirms the answer. Is it? Well, the eagles are vultures. They're, they're vultures. They're just pretty, that's all. Thank you. Well, you are pretty dirty. That's why Steph will marry you. Okay, the coming of the Son of Man. Where am I at? Oh, immediately after the tribulation, those days, the sun will darken and the moon will not give way light, the stars will fall from the heavens, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will be appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's the second coming. It's not the rapture of the church. And he will send his angels to get to muster the armies of heaven. That's what verse 31 is going to tell you. God sent his angels to muster the people, uh, the saints in heaven together to come back with him. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from where? From the four winds, from the ends of the heavens, to the other end of the heavens. That's not the rapture. That's the gathering of the saints to come back with Jesus. 
Then he gives a parable to the fig tree, but we won't go through this because this is the meat of my sermon. I ain't got about 15 minutes. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Nobody knows when the rapture is going to take place. Amen. Only God in heaven. That's right. Amen. But as the days of Noah were, also will be the coming of the Son of Man. That's one of the greatest scriptures about the rapture there ever will be. There was a Noah's great great grandfather, Enoch, was the first guy who was raptured. He was raptured before the flood, before the wrath of God came upon the earth, and he represents the church. This guy was so close to God, he walked with God. You know, Adam walked with God in the garden. This guy was just as close to God as Adam. It says he walked with God, and one day he wasn't. And the Bible tells us he never died. He was walking on. This is my picture. He was on, walking on and on with God. God. And God said, well, I'm going to destroy your earth with a flood. Why don't you just come to heaven? You like to have that relationship? You do. You know, you got the Holy Spirit in you. If you're truly, truly a believer and born again, if you have Jesus, right here is where the Holy Spirit is. If you don't have the Holy Spirit right here, if he's not the driving force in your life, if you don't get up every morning waiting and watching and wonder if he's going to come today, then you need to get him here. You hear me? There's going to be a lot of carnal Christians going to not make the rapture. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to be marrying and going about their own business and living the life they want to live today, trying to live the American dream. I go to Dunkin' Donut with my old friend Bill, and I sit there and I watch all these young people on their laptop. Yep. They, don't, they don't know that nothing else is going on in their world, but their, their schooling and their life and what they're going to do the next day. Probably half of them have never darkened the door of a church except uh, maybe get, go to a wedding or get married. That's the way it was in those days. And the evil of every man's thought was always constantly evil. That's the way it is today in the world. And sad to say there's some of that in the church. We live in a church stage where the preachers are preaching a watered down gospel where they tell you if you just uh, ask Jesus in your heart, you'll be saved and that's 100% right. But if, it, if you really truly ask him in your heart to be saved, then you truly believe that he saved you and that uh, you ask him to forgive you of your sins and come in, be Lord of your life. It's not going to stop there. That's the watered down version. After that, you start to live as close to Christ and have a cl as close a relationship as you can have with Christ, that means you have got it in here that you're Amen. truly born again. Amen. And those ones that goes and gets baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I hope that they know what they're doing. I hope they count the cost and realize, because Jesus said, count the cost if you're going to get saved. Because you're going to live, you got to live a life that's different from when you got baptized or when you accept asking him in your heart. you got to live a different life. It's got to be a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's an everyday thing. Now sometimes we slip and get a little bit off track and we don't exactly live as close as we should. God overlooks that. But if you're truly born again, he's whispering in your ear. Where was you at today, John? Did you pray? Did you read your Bible? It's Wednesday. Did you go to church? Do you love me? 
You know something? I'm a, I can tell you with all honesty, in my heart, when I think of Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, I feel a love for them. I love them. Do you feel that in your life? Can you talk to God or think of God and feel that you truly, truly love him? Is it up here or is it down here? So as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be when the coming of Christ, the people was going about all their business, worrying about all their own personal life, what, how they was going to make a living, how they was going, what they was going to do with the family, where they was going on vacation. All the things that people think about. But they didn't care. They went past Noah's. He was building the ark. Laughed. Look at that guy. He's in the middle of the woods. There's no water on the earth. I mean, spring. There wasn't even at the rain at that time. They just had like a little mist would come on the earth. Hey, no. Where are you going to float that ark? <laughs> are you in that? No, God told me. I got faith in God. He told me to build this ark because he's going to pour down rain and open up all the cisterns in the ground and he's going to flood the world. And if you believe that, you can walk on the ark with me and go with me. Yeah, you're nuts. You're a crazy old man. You know, no, it was 600 years old. This old man. I know what he felt like. <laughs> Anyhow, then one day, time came, God came, ushered them all up in the ark, and it says God closed the door. Sure. No, and his family, they didn't get raptured, but they was above the wrath of God. Yeah. They're, they're an example of the rapture of the church. They was taken out. Are you going to be taken out? Now, I used to listen to a preacher, and I still respect him. He's dead now. He taught. I learned a lot of this stuff off of him. But he always said, there's, there's no rapture in the Gospels. I said, I thought, how can you say that? God started showing me the rapture. Verse 40 of Matthew 24. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, raptured, and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, raptured, the other left. And these, ver <coughs> and these verses were the verses God st started me off with this sermon with. Verse 42. Watch therefore, you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Amen. Amen. You got loved ones that's not in the realm of the God? You got loved ones that aren't truly born again? It's up here. It says, he says to watch. Are you watching? Are you watching? Is it truly in your heart? Do you truly believe enough that you're watching for Christ to return? Is it up here? Or is it in here? If it's in here, you're watching. If it's up here, you just go your life with your life day after day on your thing. He said, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also, being ready for the Son of Man, is coming at an hour you do not expect. Is he going to catch you unexpectedly? I got a little more time. I can keep preaching. <laughs> Is, are you going to be caught unexpectedly? 
Jesus goes from chapter 24 into chapter 25 and he tells the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. Like I said earlier, five of them make it and five of them don't. The five that make it has the Holy Spirit in here. It says they have enough oil that when the bridegroom went away, when he comes back, they had enough of God in them that they were ready to go when he called them. Amen. But there is five foolish ones. And there's other parables that tells the five foolish ones. Thought, well, he said he was coming. He's never come back. We're just going to go back and do the things that we used to do. And those Christians are backslidden. We'll have to go through the seven year tribulation. We'll probably be saved, but they're going to go through some bad times. I'd like to compare the ark and the door of the ark with chapter, with chapter 4 of Revelation, verse 1. Right after the church age, there's a door open to John, and there's a voice, a shout, and a trumpet sound. And John, God says to John, come up hither. That's the rapture. That's the church. That's God's calling us up. Yeah. And then his wrath comes. His wrath is not for truly born again believers. His wrath is not for the bride of Christ. I wouldn't ask Donna to go through hell just to prove she loved me. If you think the church is going through the uh, tribulation time just to prove that you, love, that you love Jesus, that's not even good thinking. Don't you think God knows what's in your heart? Amen. Don't you think God knows if you truly love him or truly don't? If you're truly sold out to him, if you're truly not? So why would you have to prove yourself? Still got time. Sodom and Gomorrah. God told the uh, angel go into Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, go in and get the righteous out. And the Bible tells us in verse 19, of Luke 17, 17, 29, he says, but on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, when he went out, when they took him out of the wrath of God, yeah. it would rain fire and brimstone from heaven and destroy them all. Yeah. I got good news for you today. If you truly are born again and love Jesus, and you know it, You're going to be taken out before the terrible days, the seventh day tribulation period, and be with Jesus. And be in the wedding feast with Christ in the sky. Amen? Amen. Thank you for listening.